But first, another setback for NASA. For the second time this week, NASA canceling the Artemis 1 mission launch. Teams attempted to fix another dangerous fuel leak, but were not successful. Correspondent Marky Martin joining us live in studio. And Marky, this is not the day NASA or space fans were hoping for. Yeah, no, Natasha, we wanted a go for launch. However, I do feel uh, quite positive NASA would rather postpone than to have something catastrophic happen from this second fuel we uh, leak that they found earlier today. Now, early this morning, crews started loading in nearly a million gallons of fuel into that new moon rocket when hydrogen started escaping from that engine toward the bottom. Ground controllers tried to plug the leak, hoping to close that gap even flushed helium through the line at one point. After three to four hours of nothing doing the trick, NASA halted that countdown. We do not launch until we think it's right. And these uh, teams have uh, labored over that, and that is the conclusion that they came to. Now, that was NASA Administrator Bill Nelson reiterating this is standard procedure to delay a launch until they are absolutely certain it is safe. By the way, this is a $4.1 billion test flight. It's the first step in NASA's Artemis program of renewed lunar uh, exploration, I should say. The end goal being to establish a sustained human presence on the moon. But also important to note, Natasha, especially since they're having problems here, no astronauts will be on board this launch. This is not not a human flight. Yeah, an uncrewed mission. Thank you, Marky. You know, and I know so many people were excited to see it, people in person as well. What does the launch schedule look like now? Yeah, yeah, Natasha, thousands of people jammed that coast of Florida, likely planned their Labor Day weekend around it. Uh, the NASA team announcing this afternoon that rocket will not launch on or before Tuesday. We'll find out next week when the new launch date will be. If this hydrogen leak is something that needs major repair or inspection, liftoff might not be until October. October, Natasha. October. All right, Marky Martin, thank you so much. And joining us now for further insight into the Artemis One mission, former NASA astronaut Jose Hernandez. So great to see you. Thanks so much for being here. Great seeing you, Natasha, and thank you for the invitation. Happy to be here. Awesome, thank you. You know, we've seen this launch get scrubbed twice now because of technical issues. Uh, just called off three hours before the launch window. Is there anything to read into this, or is that pretty uh, standard procedure? Absolutely not, Natasha, because, uh, you know, going to space is, is not routine. Uh, there's a lot of risks involved. Even my mission, STS-128, uh, which, of which there were 127 missions before that, I got delayed twice. We were going to launch on a Monday, and we launched on a Friday after two delays. And uh, so the Artemis is a brand-new rocket. And so we're testing everything out for the first time. And so we really got to do things right and take our time because this is a certification flight. It's uncrewed. And once it goes without a hitch, then the second mission, it's going to be crewed and it's going to be go going to the moon. It won't land on the moon, but it'll come back. And then it's not until Artemis 3 that we're going to send a man and a woman to go on the surface of the moon uh, once again uh, for humankind. I mean, it's incredible. And can you help us understand the timeline here? So NASA says they need to see if a Monday or Tuesday is a possibility. And if not, it may not have another launch opportunity until all the way in October, potentially mid-October. Why that length? What's going on there? Yes. Um, well, you know, I worked uh, uh, as a Cape Crusader prepping the vehicle for each launch during the shuttle, space shuttle era. And what happens is that if it's a fix that can occur on the launch pad, then we can uh, select a, a date in the next few days. But uh, it's a eight inch um, hydrogen fuel line uh, uh, for the tank where the leak is occurring. And they believe that they can't fix it on the launch pad. So they're gonna have to roll it back to the VAB vertical assembly building and uh, work on it and then roll it back. So that's gonna take several weeks which is why they think it's not going to launch until October. But again, we shouldn't read too much into this. This is the maiden flight, uh, the first of what's going to be many Artemis missions. We're going to go back to the moon and establish a long duration lunar base with a uh, almost permanent presence of astronauts on the surface of the moon. Yeah, can you, that's the last question I have for you. Can you explain that really quickly? A sustained human presence on the moon, does that mean leaving people up there permanently? For a layperson, can you explain? 
Sure. Well, you know, we started the International Space Station in early 2000, and we've had it permanently staffed up in uh, on orbit since 2000. Uh, obviously, not the same person. We, uh, we do crew exchanges, and the same concept is going to go for the uh, for the lunar base because we're going to be developing and testing technologies that one day will be able to take us to Mars. And so it's gonna be a good test bed on the surface of the moon because it's only two or three days away from Earth. So we can come back quickly if something goes wrong. Whereas the moon, the Mars, it's a nine month mission. And so we gotta make sure we get it right. And so what better place to test it than on the surface of the moon? I hear you. Jose Hernandez, always great to see you. Thank you so much for your insights and time. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.